Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. In uh, the year 2000, Sue and I and our family moved from uh, Sheffield, where we're living, to uh, Doncaster. And uh, not long after we'd actually moved physically, our daughter Steph uh, went off to Israel for six months to uh, work on a, uh, in a Christian guest house there. Great experience for her, but obviously uh, we missed her. But uh, the point I'm making is that, um, or the, the, the reason I mention that, is that uh, during Steph's time in Israel, uh, myself and my brother Phil went to Israel uh, on a conference. And so we took the opportunity uh, one afternoon when we had a free a bit of free time to uh, travel to where Steph was living, uh, around the Tel Aviv area, uh, to meet with Steph. And uh, we walked through uh, a place called Jaffa, which is the biblical Joppa. And uh, it's interesting that uh, in Israel, in the Holy Land, in Israel-Palestine, there are a number of places which uh, commemorate events that we can read about in uh, the Bible, and particularly in the Gospels. And uh, we came around one corner of this street and saw a doorway, and it said, this is the home of Simon the Tanner, or Simon the leather worker. And I was reminded of that when I read, uh, as I've been reading through Acts of the Apostles, uh, an account in Acts chapter 10 that mentions that Peter, the Apostle Peter, was uh, staying for a time in uh, Joppa, and he was staying with Simon the Tanner, Simon the leather, leather worker. And it was while uh, Peter was there that a very unusual in some ways, but very, very significant event took place. And so uh, I want to tell, remind you of that story, but also tell you how it links in with something else on the very day I was reading it. So Peter is in, uh, in Joppa and at the same time, a chap called Cornelius who is a Roman army officer, remember the Romans were occupying the land at that time, had a, a, a kind of vision or a dream where he saw an angel. Now, Cornelius, I need to tell you, was, it was we're told he was a very devout man. He regularly prayed to God. So he was a, a worshipper of God, even though he wasn't a Jew, he was a, a Roman officer. And uh, so... Cornelius had this vision that an angel came to speak to him and to cut a, a long story short um, the angel says to him look Cornelius your prayers have been noticed your good deeds and uh, I've come now with instruction from God that you are to send men to uh, Joppa to find a man called Simon Peter and invite him to come to your house. So uh, Cornelius is a bit shocked by this visit, as he would be if an angel came, I guess. Uh, and But he does what he's told. So the, his men set off to Joppa. Uh, Cornelius is in Caesarea. Uh, so the men set off to Joppa. In the meantime, as they're on their way, Peter goes to have a lie down, uh, a time of rest. Um, and if, as, he, as he does so, he, he falls into a trance. And he, he too sees a vision, and this vision is of a, a kind of sheet lowering uh, from the heavens, and in it are all kind of creatures that for a person like Peter, who's been brought up in the Jewish faith, they're unclean. You'd never want to touch them. They're regarded as unclean. And yet this voice comes, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter says, no, Lord, I'm not going to eat that because they're unclean. Three times this happens, and then and God says, Look, Peter, you are not to call unclean what I call clean. So Peter's a bit shocked here. And then God tells him that some men are going to come and ask him to go and uh, visit this man called Cornelius. And, and lo and behold, there are next minute, there they are at the door. And so Peter's heard this message from God. And so he's obedient. He goes with them. And... Uh, when he gets to Cornelius's house, he goes in to the house. And this is a big step for Peter because for a Jew, 
anybody who's not Jewish is kind of unclean and you would never want, never go into a Gentile, a non-Jewish house because that would defile you. And yet Peter has done this now. He's broken a barrier because God has told him to. And uh, Peter uh, says, I see very clearly that God doesn't show partiality. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. So it begins to uh, unpack the gospel message that, that he tells them about Jesus. Uh, and he's probably got a good sermon prepared, a good message. But, but before he's even got very far, the Holy Spirit falls upon uh, Cornelius and his household and uh, they're baptised. And that is kind of a real breakthrough. And Peter comes to see that the gospel message, the message of good news of God's love in Christ is not just restricted to a certain uh, group, but it's for the whole world. And the, Jesus wears God so loved the world that he gave, gave his only son. And it's uh, fascinating that when I'd, I'd read that uh, a few mornings ago, that passage and be reminded of the story and the opening of Peter's eyes to the truth that the gospel is for all, that uh, I began to look at, well, I'm using uh, a prayer diary that's produced by an organized Christian organization called CARE, uh, Christian Action Research and Education. They're involved in presenting the Christian aspect to to life. Uh, uh, they're, they're involved in supporting uh, members of parliament, etc., researching, do a fantastic work. Uh, we've supported them for many years. But the, the very day, I think, that I read that story, the prayer for the day in the prayer diary was this. Father, may we always be open-hearted toward people from other countries and other and unfamiliar cultural and religious groups. Thank you that the gospel transcends all differences and is for every tribe and nation. Amen. And that's a reminder that the gospel is for all. Didn't the uh, angels, when they visited the shepherd, talked about good news of great joy for all people? And uh, when you read the end of the uh, Bible in the book of Revelation, that vision that John has of how things will be when human history is, is concluded, or at least as we know it, and that great kingdom of God will be ushered in. And John sees this vision of a great multitude. And he says, they're from every tribe and nation. So uh, the kind of thought or the reminder, if you like, that came to me again, once again, is that, that Jesus stands with open arms to welcome, to draw all people to himself. And we need to challenge ourselves about our attitudes because in our society, in our culture today, it's often that somebody who's different, we kind of stand back from them. We maybe treat them different. We look down upon them even just because they're different from what we are. I'm currently reading a great little story that's based in uh, Wales. Um, and it's uh, fascinating, even in different places in Wales, uh, there are barriers like the Swansea people might not like the Cardiff people or the Clinically people. Uh, but it's, it's, it's part of how we humans often are. But we are called by the gospel to get rid of those barriers, to welcome all, to proclaim the good news of God's love for every person. So uh, thank you so much for listening today. God bless you. And, and we pray that uh, our hearts may be opened afresh to the good news of God's love and that we may freely give God's love to all people, regardless of what they look like, what their background is, who they are. Thank you so much for listening today.